Sawyer. It has become virtually a seasonal affair. The weather changes, and there is a new Madonna controversy. This one is a video that MTV, the popular cable music video channel, refused to air. Instantly, a storm of questions arose. Is this a kind of censorship? Has Madonna finally gone too far? We'll look for some answers when I talk with Madonna in just a few minutes. And we will see, in its entirety, the video that has caused all this noise. But first, the controversy itself, with correspondent Ken Kashiwahara. So now. Nudity, suggestions of bisexuality, sadomasochism, multiple partners. Finally, MTV decided Madonna had gone too far. Her latest video, Justify My Love, was banned. Now, for the first time, the channel has decided to take a pass on a clip by pop music's hottest star. For six years, this star has turned shock into success, consistently pushing the outer limits of the outrageous, of what is permissible, what is not. Madonna has attracted millions of fans around the world and offended many in the mainstream. Like a Prayer, for example, was criticized by religious groups as blasphemy. And because of this video, Pepsi-Cola canceled a Madonna TV commercial, despite having paid her $5 million. I wouldn't have turned out the way I was if I didn't have all those old-fashioned values to rebel against. So. Madonna's career has been fashioned by her vision of sexuality. From her gyrations to her dress, Madonna underwear worn as outerwear became a fashion craze. Even her serious endeavors tend to be sexually suggestive. Madonna urging, get out the vote. And if you don't vote, you're gonna get a spanky. While MTV has banned Justify My Love, the pay TV channel, Jukebox, has decided to show it. We're not a censor, and we don't, you know, we don't position ourselves as a censor. Uh, I think we're very sensitive, though, to our audience. So whether she is deliberately provocative and in bad taste, or performing within the limits of artistic expression, Madonna continues to carve a career out of controversy. This is Ken Kashiwahara for Nightline. And now the video. Obviously, we are broadcasting it late at night, and we expect that only adults are watching. You should know this video includes graphic portrayals of sexuality and nudity. And when we come back, Madonna. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Allstate. She is certainly controversial, but she is also certainly popular. Madonna's first four albums sold 48 million copies, and Forbes magazine calls her the top-earning female entertainer this year. Madonna joins us from Los Angeles. Am I correct in assuming that uh, if, uh, if an artist wants an album or, or a record to be very popular, you need to have airplay, or usually you need to have airplay on, on MTV? Well, it's a, very, it's a very important marketing tool for an artist, yes. So should I assume then that you went through the ordinary process, as to say that you, with, with MTV in mind, put together your video and, and simply submitted it to their standards committee thinking it would get the clearance that it always has? Yes, I did. Well, you know that, or at least your record company knows that nudity is, is banned by MTV. They're not going to allow any... Well, let, I'm not so sure about that because when I did my Vogue video, there's a shot of me well, you can, I'm wearing a see-through dress, and you can clearly see my breasts. Now, they told me that they wanted me to take that out, but I said I wouldn't, and they, they played it anyways. So I thought that, once again, I was going to be able to bend the rules a little bit. Well, you, you certainly were bending the rules a lot more than you had in the past, or did you feel that you were well within the bounds that you had been? Um, I guess half of me thought that I was going to get away with it and that I was going to be able to convince them, and the other half thought, well... No, you know, with the wave of censorship being, you know, and the, the conservatism that is, you know, sort of sweeping over the nation, I, I thought that it, it was going to be, there was going to be a problem. Well, when you say you thought you could get away with it, a am I right? Have you sort of pushed the envelope a little bit with each one? With every video, you've, you've tried some new things, if only to be experimenting for your own reasons? Um, well, I think that's what art is all about, experimenting. But um, it is an expression, it is my artistic expression, and for me, a video is the filmic expression of the song, you know, a visual that describes what the song is about. And you've got to listen to the words of the song, you know, it's about a woman who's talking to her lover, and she's saying, tell me your dreams, am I in them? Tell me your fears, are you scared? 
tell me your stories. I'm not afraid of who you are. And so, you know, we're dealing with sexual fantasies. We're fantasies and being truthful and honest with our partner, you know, and these feelings exist. And I'm just dealing with the truth here in my video. Well, let me tell you why I asked that, because there are a lot of people in the industry who have said, look, this is one of the best self-marketers in the business. We have never really seen anything like it. And she knows how to push right to that edge. And this was a win-win for you. If they put the video on, you would get that kind of play. And if they didn't, you'd still make some money. It was all, in a sense, a kind of publicity stunt. Well, it, it may seem like it was a publicity stunt, and actually I, I was very lucky, but I must say I did not plan on selling this video. I just went in there to shoot it, and I said, you know what, I'm not going to think about whether it's going to get played or not. I'm, not gonna, I'm, not, I'm just going to do it. This is, this is what I, how I truly feel about this song. This is how I want to express myself. And when we gave it to MTV, um, we, you know, we asked them if, if they would play it. They came back a while later, later and they said no. I said, is there one scene or another that you specifically object to? And they said no, it's the whole tone. So we didn't really even have a chance to try to make it viewable. They, didn't, they rejected it completely. And so then I had to think, you know, with my manager, you know, what next? What should we do? And we decided, hell, you know, let's, let's sell it. Let's sell it like a video single. It's never been done before. And, you know, the controversy just happened. It wasn't planned, but, you know... But in the end, you're going to wind up making even more money than you would have. Yeah, so lucky me. <laughs> but the question that, that I think a lot of people are concerned about is you, you say you go into the, into the studio yeah. and you want to illustrate the song and, you, and you're yeah. doing it in the way that you want. But yeah. they see a kind of trend where you are pushing the limits of sexuality. In this case, you have nudity and you have bisexuality mm -hmm. and you have uh, apparently group sex. And they're thinking that maybe you're... The... Pardon me? What are you saying? You're saying I'm pushing the limits of sexuality? No, no, you're pushing the I'm limits not... of what's permissible. That okay. You, that you're carrying it a little further each time. And I guess what people are asking then is where is that line? Where do you finally say, okay, well, this is far enough? That's a good question. But then I would like to address the whole issue of censorship on television. Where do we draw the line in general? I mean, if well, you MTV... Can't, you can't go that far yet. You, you, first, you have to tell me where you draw the line. Well, okay, I draw the line in terms of what I think is viewable on television. I draw the line where, with violence and, and humiliation and degradation, okay? And I don't think any of these issues are, are, are evident in, in my video. That's where I draw the line. That's what I don't want to see. Well, I guess know. that then, then one woman's art is another woman's pornography. I'm thinking of the Express Yourself video. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are images of you chained. There are yes, images of you I'm crawling under a table, and there are a yes, lot of people yes. who are upset by that. Okay, I've chained myself, though, okay? No, there wasn't a man that put that chain on me. I did it myself. I was chained to my desires. I crawled under my own table. You know, there wasn't a man standing there making me do it. I do everything by my own volition. I'm in charge, okay? Degradation or, is, is when somebody else is making you do something against your wishes. So okay? is... Okay? I understand. Is the expression then of sexuality, so long as it's two consenting adults, Absolutely. any form of sexuality all right on television? Well, then I would like, okay, first I'd like to say I don't believe in censorship of any kind, but then I would like to say that I believe in labeling. And I, so then what I, would, I would believe in some kind of, you know, warning label um, or some kind of label that would say to adults, you know, after a certain hour we're allowed to you know, play these kind of adult theme videos, you know. But then, okay, so I've dealt with sexuality, but I also think that we should also have categories for other issues that I think are not um, necessarily good for 10-year-olds to watch, okay? I mean, I think MTV should have their, you know, their violence hour, and I think they should have their degradation to women hour, and then we could have an hour where we deal with adult sexual themes. But, you know, if we're going to have censorship, Let's not be hypocrites about this. Not, let's not have double standards, you know? I mean, why is it okay for 10-year-olds to see, you know, some, someone's body being ripped to shreds or, or Sam Kinison spitting on Jessica Hahn? Why are we going to deal with these issues? Why is that okay? Why do parents not have a problem with that? And, but why do they have a problem with two adults, you know, two consenting adults displaying affection for each other, regardless of their sex. Madonna, you've raised about 30 important questions, and I think we ought to get, get at those when we come back. Well, I back. only have a few minutes. So. Well, we're going to come right back after we pay some bills here, and we'll explore those questions in just a moment. Madonna, I wonder if you were being facetious a moment ago. You said despite your concerns about violence and degradation to women, maybe MTV should consider having a, an hour 
for violence in an hour that displays degradation to women, despite the fact that it's broadcast right into people's homes where their children could see it? Well, I'm saying we already have these videos that display degradation to women and violence that are played 24 hours a day, but yet they don't want to have a video playing that deals with sex between two consenting adults. So I'm saying, you know, why, where do we draw the line? Why is this, why is this good for a 10-year-old to watch and why is, it, why is it, and I guess I was being sarcastic, you know, to say, look, give me a chance, you know, let me have my slut, give me a warning label, warn parents so it doesn't take them by surprise so that they have a chance to take their child away from television, but also warn them about violence and warn them about, you know, scenes and videos that, that depict degradation to women. But you, you know, you know how very hard it is for a parent to control the child having access to TV and they sit there and they watch MTV all day long. Now, yes. would you, if you were in that parent's position and it was your 10 year old, your 11 year old, would you not be worried about their seeing this kind of stuff? Well, personally, I wouldn't be worried about it and this is why, because I think that sexuality is something that Americans would really rather just sweep up under the rug and I think that if my video provokes an open discussion, you know, maybe the kids will go and ask their parents these questions, you know, if it provo provokes an open discussion about sex with their parents, I think this is a really good thing. Okay, but Madonna, I... you have to help me here. When, when a 10-year-old sees mm -hmm. you chained to the bed or sees your boyfriend bound up and another woman comes by while you're there, m maybe you, no, don't, you, know, don't you know that that's a fantasy and you know that, that other people are, are able to deal with all kinds of sexuality, but a 10-year-old yeah. is going to get awfully confused here. Good, then let them get confused and let them go ask their parents about it and let their parents, you know, explain to them that it is a sexual fantasy and that these things exist in life, like they see violence, okay? It exists in life. It's not a pretty picture necessarily. You know, it's a frightening thing, but it's a reality. Why are we willing to deal with the realities of violence and sexism? And why aren't we willing to deal with sexuality? Why? I mean, the networks won't even play ads on TV that are about condoms, about birth control, about practicing safe sex. We're pretending like we don't have a lot of teenagers that are having sex in the world right now. What, why are we, you know, why are we subjecting ourselves to this kind of ignorance? Look, I'll tell you what their answer is going to be to you. They're going to say, you know what, we really are concerned about these issues and we really are concerned that our children understand them, but quite frankly, it is our job to instruct really? our children and we don't want you on television in the kinds of ways that you're on television giving those images to our children thanks anyway well get, guess what they're not doing their job because the teenage pregnancies in this country have reached uh, you know a highest high I mean we have sophomores on high school who are having their second babies already okay and the rate of AIDS is raising in the heterosexual community at a really frightening rate okay so why is that these parents are not doing their jobs you know it there is the question, I and mean, I guess this is what you're trying to tell me about, that, 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 that you're balancing between an artist's need for self-expression, an artist's yes. need to explore any kind of issue, and, and that certainly includes sexuality, mm -hmm. and the responsibility that comes along with the kind of prominence that you have, and the fact that you're a role model for people, and I guess you have to wrestle with that, don't you? The fact that I'm a role model? That, I have to wrestle with that. Well, that, that there is a responsibility that comes okay. along with your position. Okay, you know what? I, I feel that I'm behaving in a very responsible way. If you, if you say I have a responsibility as a mainstream artist, whatever, I feel that I am being responsible because I am here, as I said at the, at the beginning of the interview, I'm talking about some, the video is displaying people being honest to each other about their sexuality. They're not alienating anyone. They're not degrading anyone. It's about honesty, it's about the celebration of sex. There is nothing wrong with that, okay? And my that is my responsibility. And I'm also very responsible because I do deal with sexuality a lot in my shows and in my music. You know, I promote safe sex whenever I can. I put literature in my albums about birth control and using condoms. I am responsible. But my point really goes back to that other question, and I'm not suggesting that you're not. I'm just saying that, that you have to ask yourself, or, or do you not, the question, when you go into the studio, mm -hmm. or when you put on your show, you want to be able to explore these kinds of things because that's what right. art is. But at the same time, you have to reflect on what's going to be responsible. So then, do you say, where do I draw the line, or does it keep going further and further? But I, as I said to you before, I am being responsible. You know, I... Where I draw the line is what I said. I don't believe in gratuitous violence, and I don't believe in degradation. You know, uh, the degradation of any human being, okay? And, and I would never promote those things in any of my art. 
You've taken, and I don't. You've taken some heat, I know, and, and, mm -hmm. and you would like to have a chance to, to talk about it from, from some women who feel that, that uh, uh, maybe you're not expressing the values that they want feminism to express. For, for all the way from way back when you wore the, the belt buckle that said boy toy to the material girl video, which they feel reflects old values of women, even if it was satirical to, to express yourself. Do you have an answer to them? To the feminists? Fem feminists? Who raised that kind of question? Well, I would like to point out that they're missing a couple of things because, you know, I may be dressing like the uh, typical bimbo, whatever, but I'm in charge. You know, I'm in charge of my fantasies. I put myself in these situations with men, you know, and everybody knows, uh, you know, in terms of my image in the public, people don't think of me as a person who's not in, in charge of my career or my life, okay? And isn't that what feminism is all about? You know, equality for men and women, and aren't I, aren't I in charge of my life, doing the things I want to do, making my own decisions? I don't think anybody would question whether you're in charge of your own life. I do have a last question for you. What is the next sort of thing that we could be looking forward to? Do you, do you have it in, in mind already? What is, you mean, you want me to promote one of my products? My no, 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 no. I'm asking... My up-and-coming button-pushing products? No, 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 that's not the point. The point is, if you, are you, will you continue to explore sexuality Absolutely. in the fashion that you have? Will you, will you try to carry it a little further in a way that... I, well, I don't know. I can't predict what I'm going to feel artistically. I don't think anyone can, but it is a very important issue to me, and I'm sure I will be dealing with it more in the future. I have no doubt about it. You were kind to talk to us tonight, Madonna. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for listening to me. When we come back, we are going to look at some of the latest stories out of the story that we've been following for these many weeks, the Persian Gulf.